All right, uh, so in the next uh, few modules, we're going to construct the Brouwer diagram that we've been work actually been working on for the last uh, several modules. And so we've been building up that information to be able to construct the diagram uh, that I first showed on the slides and I'll go back to in these lectures. And we're gonna start with the low PO2 region. And again, um, we talked about this reaction in the low PO2, right? We expect vacancies of oxygen and we expect electrons to be the dominant species. And our reaction for that, which I'll repeat here, is the mass action expression for reduction uh, was this, right? So this is from what we previously did. And we have our Brouwer approximations. The one that applied to this region we discussed was this approximation. So these two are the highest species. Everything else is lower. So by applying this, what we're going to do is basically plug this in to this expression here. So we'll plug, since we already have it solved for the number of electrons, we'll plug that in. And we'll get two times the site fraction of oxygen vacancies, and all of that's gonna be squared, and it's PO to the one half. And so what we're gonna to try to do now is see if we can get an expression for the uh, site fraction of, or concentration of the various defects like a VO2 or uh, number of electrons as a function of PO2, right? Because that was our x-axis and we wanted to see how the concentration varied uh, in that region. So we're basically going to re uh, algebraically rearrange this to see if we can do just that. And so by um, kind of combining all of this, we get that we have four times the site fraction cubed now, and that's P to the one half, or sorry, P to the O2 to the one half. And so at this point, this is, again, this is equal to the mass action expression or equilibrium constant for that. And so now I'm gonna solve for VO2, right? That's our, that's our concentration that we're after. So if we move that to one side and move everything else to the other, we get one fourth times K red times PO2 to the minus one half. So there's a minus there by rearranging it and uh, moving it to the other side. And again, if we want to get the concentration, then we're going to get rid of the cube. So we're going to take the cube root. So we have VO2 is going to be equal to, um, and then in this case, we have, we're just going to leave it as one fourth to the one third. Um, and you'll see kind of why I just leave a lot of this stuff as is. And then this to the one third, and then PO2 to the minus one half turns into minus one sixth uh, in this case. And so at this point, we see that we have the concentration of the oxygen vacancies as a function of this, uh, of the PO2, of the oxygen partial pressure, and then constants, right? This is a constant, this is a constant. Um, but our graph was actually log concentration. Uh, uh, compared to log PO2. And so we're going to take the log of both sides just so we see a similar form. So if we do that, we get log VO2 um, is going to be equal to log one fourth to the one third plus log K red to the one third plus log uh, PO2 to the minus one sixth. And so at this point, we've got it in the form of our uh, graph uh, of the Brouwer diagram. And so we've got log VO2 or log the concentration, and then we've got constants. So we just, this is all a constant right here, and then log of PO2. And so if we wanna look at the, the kind of proportionality um, of this, right? This is proportional to uh, log, sorry, log PO2 to the minus one sixth. 
um, because again, we're just, this is a constant. So we're just looking at the, in effect, we just want to look at the slope. And so here, you know, again, we have, um, if we're just ignoring the constants for a second, uh, we can use log rules and we can actually move this minus one six out to the front. And so that we get, and I'll continue it up here, is uh, proportional to minus one sixth uh, times the log of P O two. So this is basically X. This is our Y axis. And so therefore this, which is the minus six is the slope, right? This is the slope of the uh, log V O two, or that's, you know, again, this is the concentration versus log PO2. So that's the, uh, and then this is again in the low PO2 region. And so this basically says our slope for this oxygen vacancy concentration as a function of oxygen partial pressure should be minus one six. That's how it should change in the low PO2 region. So I'm going to switch over to the Brouwer diagram and we'll see if this minus one six matches with what we've just got. All right, so we're back to the Brouwer diagram. I started, I showed you at the very beginning of this section, and um, this is uh, figure 6.6. .6. And particularly looking at A, we see that A is the uh, assumption that the Schocke, um mass action expression is much greater than the uh, intrinsic electronic. And that's the assumption that we made for the intermediate range. So this is basically the, the, um, the one that we've been working on. We've been looking at the low, intermediate, and high partial pressure regions, and you can see the approximations. And then each, again, each of these is the log concentration uh, by the log PO2. So as we just showed in our uh, kind of a rearrangement of the low PO2 uh, mass action expression, the K red, we saw that the concentration of VO2, right, um, this we said had a slope of minus one sixth, and that's actually what we see up here, right? Of both the the concentration of oxygen vacancies and the concentration of electrons in that region. So basically, um, with increasing pressure, the concentration goes down, or you can think of it as you decrease the pressure and the concentration of those vacancies goes up, and it goes up by that minus one sixth slope in terms of log PO2, log of the concentration. And so we've just kind of verified the slope of this particular um, area. And so the next thing we wanna look at, and the next thing we'll go back to the, the paper for, is we'll look at electrons real quick, because that was the other part of the, uh, the K-red equation, and we can easily uh, find out that relationship just like we did VO2. All right, so like I said, we're going to start and now look at the concentration of electrons. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that expression that I already kind of rearranged and I already solved for VO2 um, two here, and that equals one fourth to the one third, K red one third, and then PO2 to the minus one sixth, right? So I'm just going to use that expression. And I do that because I know based on my approximation earlier that I have this relationship, right? So I know that VO2 is e oh sorry, I know that VO2 is equal to one half of this if I just rearrange, right? So that's what I'm going to do here. Is I'm going to take what we started with here and now I know that this equals one half times the concentration of electrons. And then, so if I rearrange this to solve for N, right, that means I have two times everything that I talked about before. Right? So I basically have this expression. So basically, everything is the same as what we had for VO2. The only difference is we multiply by 2. So the concentration goes up by 2 based on our approximation. So if we do the, all the other stuff that we just did to get it in terms of log, right? 
we take the log of both sides, this is going to be equal to log 2 times 1 fourth to the 1 third plus log uh, k red 1 third plus log po2 to the minus 1 sixth, right? So this again was this, th these are all constants, and this was the slope, right? So it's still pro the log of n, the concentration of electrons, is still proportional to the same slope, right? The 1 sixth, because we can do the same thing where we um, use log rules to bring this out, uh, out to the front. And we have this, and this is still our slope. The only difference in this whole thing is in this constant, because we see the additional uh, factor here of not 2, but log 2. And so that's the only difference. And so when we go back to the slide, we'll see that minor difference in the in the, uh, in the in the slopes. All right, so now looking at the electrons, again, we see we just verified that the slope was still minus 1 sixth based on uh, what we did there. Uh, and you can see that the only difference between these two, they have the same slope, but you see that the concentration of electrons is slightly higher, right? And that's that factor of log two in the constants. And so that's why you see it uh, slightly above the curve for uh, VO2. So that's the only difference. And we've just kind of verified this fraction of the diagram. And uh, in the next video, we're going to continue with that and look at the high PO2 region as well.